Alva, I want to get at what consciousness really is, and I know the neuroscience approach, I know the philosophical approach. Here's a different way to approach it. Let's see if we can, we can do this. Just let's ask ourselves the question, what things are conscious? How, how do you answer that? Human beings, okay, are conscious. Let's, let's take that as a given. What else? Most animals uh, are conscious. Uh, the, the, the question I ask, the sort of the, the words I use to in, make intuit this picture, intuit this question, is which, which beings have worlds? That is, the world shows up for what? No, no world shows up for this table. Um, lots of things happen to this table. This table can be made to undergo all sorts of changes, but there is no, no, nothing is happening for this table. Um, and it's clear that throughout the animal world, we want to say that uh, there is experience. There are worlds. There is a point of view. Um, well, every animal has a world that presents itself to it, which is part of your philosophy. Even single cell amoeba bacterium have a world that they operate in, and they have some sensory communication with it. When we, when we get to the limiting cases, we, we need not to rely on our intuitions, but appeal to some principles in our, in our views. And here we're, we're in kind of, I actually think we're in scientifically unchartable territory. Uh, let, let me explain what I mean. Our ordinary notion of consciousness is very much wedded to the idea of creatures that look and act like us. Which is why when they put, you know, lips or ears or eyes on a robot, it makes it very easy for us to have very strong emotional reactions to the robot. In fact, there's a wonderful movie which I recommend uh, called The Man with Two Brains that's by uh, Reiner and has Steve, Steve Martin in it. He falls in love with a brain in a vat <laughs> and he puts a hat on the vat and wraps a shawl around the vat. The vat is basically a cookie jar yeah. and he tapes some plastic yeah. candy wax lips on the front of the vat and he has has a loving relationship with this brain. What he needs to do is give the brain a face, because we need a face, we need a body, we need something that looks and acts like us. Um, coming at it from the flip side, people that have facial injuries, uh, Parkinson's syndrome, or damage to the cranial, to the facial nerve, uh, who have very mask-like and passive faces, are very difficult to talk to and be intimate with. Even when you know perfectly well that their consciousness is unaffected, their physical impassivity makes them, makes it hard to treat them as if they are bearers of consciousness. Interesting. And so as we, in the animal kingdom or, or in nature, as we move farther from what is like us, it becomes harder to, for our mental vocabulary to stick. But this is, is this our problem and just the way that we're constructed, or is this a fundamental reflection on what consciousness no, really is? It's, that's a good question. It's our problem. It's clearly our problem, but it's a deep problem. It's not merely that we don't know whether or not there is or is not consciousness in that paramecium. The point is that we don't really even know how, we don't even know what would count as evidence that it, that it, that there is or that there isn't. Nobody would doubt that there's very little, and there might be a, a tiny speck of consciousness. The question is, is there any, is there, of the stuff that we are conscious with, whatever that is, is there even any quanta of that yeah. in a paramecium? Or, or yeah. as you go up the chain, multicellular animals, and, and, and as you go up. This is really an, an unanswerable question where we're literally outstripping the meanings we've given to these words but I'll tell you what I want to say. I want to say yes. I want to say okay. there is a That's smidgen. A there is a smidgen. And the smidgen comes from, from the life. The smidgen starts with life. It, it, and then you have the complexity and the complexification and the interaction and all the structural accretion that happens through evolution. And then you get us. And we're just an elaborated version of them. Just to see if I understand, what you need is life. What you need is some sort of a sensory input from an environment so it has life and an environment with which to interact. And under those conditions, there may be a small quantum, if you will, of, of consciousness that would get much more complex. Here's a way, 
here's a way to put the point that I think captures my meaning. We bear a biological kinship even to the most remote species. Certainly. And I suspect that what we call cognition and mind and thought and belief and all of that is a kind of elaboration of us, of something that exists in the most primitive possible forms from the beginning. Um, which is not to say that the mind of these radically distinct species is, is comparable to ours, sure. but it's to be rigorously naturalistic about mind and to recognize that mind evolved out of our microbial origins as, as, as have all our other traits. That's internally consistent with, with your view. I appreciate that. And also the rejection of the so-called panpsychic view that even in tables and in inert objects that everything has some small element of the stuff we call mind. You would reject that. Yes, I reject that. That, that, that view has no motivation. OK. How about? in artificial um, uh, entities, uh, computers, uh, software, that ultimately can be given the kinds of computational power that we have in our human brain. It's within, conceivable within our lifetime that computers will be built that will have the computational power of our brains. I agree with that. And I see no, I, I can articulate no principle, no principled reason why there won't be artificial minds. And it's interesting to me, you say that differently than the way you talked about a single cell animal. And now that single cell animal might, might be processing information vast, of vast orders of magnitude less than this artificial computer of 20 years from now. And yet you were quite sure that in some way this small single cell entity that has life and interacting with the environment, processing information very little, has something of consciousness. But the language you use to talk about this powerful computational equivalent computer, you phrased it a negation of a negation. And I sense a difference between your views the, of both. The, the key, the thing that really makes the cases different is the biological kinship that we share even to the most distant biological species. Um, it, that's, that's the link that makes me feel that the only hope we have ever of making sense of ourselves is if we can make sense of our relation to these remote beings. Now, we find it very easy to project mentalistic language onto machines. We talk about what our, what our car wants to do. Our, my car won't start this morning, you know, my, my, my bad car. Um, we, we find it very easy to do that these powerful metaphors we have, these mentalistic metaphors, we're a far way off, I think, from creating genuine autonomous bearers of mind in the artificial world. And I think part of that goes back to the, 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 the broader question of just what are the functions that we would wish to be replicating in an artificial entity such that the possession of those functions give you real, real mind. I think there's, there's deep conceptual spade work to be done in, in, in artificial intelligence. Um, so, so going back to your question, that, that we, which we've begun with, you know, what things are and what things are not conscious, um, I've, tried to, I've tried to answer it in two ways. I think we need to own up to the fact that we can't simply, you know, future performance is not guaranteed by past performance or whatever it is that the financial analyst people say. I mean, our, our comfortable belief that our dogs and our children are conscious doesn't tell us how to deal with the paramecium. And we have to admit that. It would be dishonest to say, look, um, the definition of consciousness is the presence of X, and we find it in both. It's, we're, we're dealing here with, with degrees, with, with, um, with, with fineness of grain, and with... Um, with with, with differences that, that, are, that are really hard to make precise, and, and maybe we can't. Because ultimately, I suppose, we, we believe that living things come from non-living things, which were genuinely not bearers of consciousness, you know, in the chemical primordial soup. So um, we, want to, we want to be honest about the conceptual indeterminacy here, while holding out the very reasonable hope for recognizing the continuity of, of all forms of life as bearers of, of degrees of consciousness.